Hello and good morning to everyone. Welcome to your English literature live class. And the chapter which we are going to do today is the mystery of the perfect maid, which is given as chapter fifteen in your literature books on page number one twenty three. So this is story, the mystery of the perfect maid, it has been written by Agatha Christie, who was an English novelist and a short story writer. She has written a lot of short stories also, and her work mainly revolves around crime, murder, uh, suspense, and detection. And in most of her works, she uh, uses she has used these two fictional detective characters. One is Hercule Poirot and the other is Miss Marple. And in this story, we are going to see how Miss Marple is going to solve this mystery of the perfect maid. So, uh, what happens is that um, there, there's one, there's one, uh, there's a maid whose name is Gladdy, and she uh, has been accused of theft. Uh, in in uh, by her owner, and she has been replaced by a very perfect maid who's who does all the chores very perfectly. But one fine day, what happens that uh, the perfect maid Mary Higgins she disappears, right? And uh, we'll see how this um how Miss Marple helps the inspector to solve the mystery of the perfect maid when we'll go through the story. So now let us read the chapter. The mystery of the perfect maid. First of all, correct the spelling of mystery. Uh, in the heading, it is given wrong. Write down M Y S T E R Y. Okay. Agatha Christie is best known for her work revolving around her fictional detectives Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. Miss Marple appears in twelve of Agatha Christie's crime novels and in twenty short stories. She is an elderly spinster who lives in the village of Saint Mary Meads and acts as an amateur consulting detective. What makes Miss Marple so effective as a detective is her ability to blend into the background, and for her shrewd intelligence. In the case of the Perfect Maid, which was published in 1950, Miss Marple witnesses Gladdy, uh, an honest maid, being dismissed. Gladdy had been accused of stealing from her employees, Miss Lavinia, and her sister, Miss Emily. A new perfect maid, Mary Higgins, is hired to replace Gladdy. Miss Marple senses that all is not as it seems and sets about finding a way to prove Gladdy's innocence. Now, as I have already told you, that in this in this story, which fictional detective has been used, uh, Miss Marple. She is. Uh, she now she has appeared in twelve of Agatha Christie's crime novels and twenty short stories. Okay. What do we see that there is a brief description given about Miss Marple in the beginning, in the introduction of the chapter. That is, she is an elderly spinster. Spinster, you people know that uh, an unmarried woman who has not um, uh, who has not married is known as an, an uh, is known as a spinster. Okay, and where does she uh, she lives? She live uh, where does she live? Uh, she live in a village which is named at Saint Mary Mead. Okay, and she is an amateur consulting detective. That means who is an amateur? A person who does um, who takes part in activities out of pleasure because that particular activity interests him or her and not uh, professionally. okay when when we are involved in doing some activity uh, because we are interested in that and we do not want money uh, from we don't make money from it that is when we are called as an amateur okay so she was uh, she was not a professional detective but she did so because um, she had that quality and she, and uh, solving the cases interested um, uh, she had an interest in solving the cases in solving the mystery so uh, she uh, people used to consult her okay you got the meaning of amateur you can also write down the meaning of amateur a person who takes part in any activity for the sake of pleasure and not for money that means a person is not professionally involved in that activity 
okay so what are the two uh, what are the two qualities which makes her a good detective one is her ability to blend into the background that means she goes into the background and she analyzes everything very uh, clearly very cl carefully okay she pays attention to each and every detail of the case so that is one quality and the other one is her shrewd intelligence that is her sharp intelligence her wit uh, which uh, makes her stand out and which uh, give which imparts her this quality to that people consulted her as, as an detective right so in this this story was published in 1950 and uh, she has she witnesses the case of gladdy who is an honest maid uh, and who was accused of stealing from her employers that is um, the, uh, who are the employers miss lavinia and miss emily spinners okay and then uh, they replace this uh, gladdy with a new maid who is very perfect uh, who does the who does the work very perfectly but uh, you know she one kind of she disappears and a lot happens along with that um, because of which miss uh, marple was consulted right so now let us see what happens and how does all these uh, how do all these things things take place obediently shutting the door miss marple's maid edna advanced into the room and swallowed once or twice now this story begins with the setting is miss uh, marple is there in a room and edna who is what who is um, she is the maid of miss marple okay edna is the maid of miss marple and she comes she enters the room and uh, uh, very obediently shuts the door that means uh, miss marple must have asked her to shut the door okay so obediently obedience means when you when um, when you know somebody asks you to do something and you do that thing that is that is why it has been said obediently shutting the door so that means she must have asked her to shut the door so she enters the room and swallowed once or twice that means you can just underline and write down this shows hesitance okay she is being hesitant because she is the she is the maid and she has to talk to her um master mistress right so that is why she is she is uh, feeling hesitant hesitant right yes edna what did you what did you want to talk to me about <clears throat> said miss marple encouragingly okay uh, so now uh, when she was she was uh, she was hesitant so miss marple is encouraging her maid to speak up she asked her um, she asked her what the matter what's the matter what did she want to talk to her about then uh, well, let us see what edna says oh please ma'am it's my cousin gladdy you see she's lost her job at old hall with the skinners and gladdy is very upset about it <clears throat> very upset indeed so now edna tells miss marple that her cousin who was gladdy gladdy was edna's cousin and uh, also gladdy was the honest maid who was being who was replaced by the skinners okay so gladdy uh, she says that my cousin gladdy she has been she is very upset because she has been um, uh, dismissed from her job okay she has been fired and uh, where did she where was she working she was working at the old hall with the skinner so you can write down this is the place where gladdy was working old hall and who are the who are her mistresses the skinners who are the skinners the two sisters okay uh, miss emily and miss lavinia got it so this is the thing then miss marple looked slightly surprised her recollection of gladdy who had occasionally come to drink tea in the kitchen on her days out was a stout good natured honest local village girl so this is the description of gladdy just um, put an arrow and write down description of gladdy that uh, uh, miss marple has uh, met gladdy once or twice uh, when she when during her uh, you know when the days were off she used to visit Uh, here uh, at miss marple's house and had tea with her and all she could remember about gladdy was that she was a stout uh, uh, that means uh, she was uh, uh, a plump lady and good natured and honest local village girl stout is a person who is not very tall and uh, who is very uh, full okay so that is the person who is known as stout and she was very honest like the most importantly she was an honest local village girl right 
Next, Edna went on. You see, ma'am, it's the way it happened. The way Miss Skinner looked. Now she says that uh, the uh, the problem lies where uh, in the way the Miss Skinner looked at <clears throat> the things. Uh, how inquired Miss Marple patiently? Did Miss Skinner look? Now she asked uh, that how did Miss Skinner look? Oh, ma'am, replied Edna. It was such a shock to Gladys. You see, one of Miss Emily's brooches were miss was missing, and such a hue and cry for it as never before. And of course, nobody likes a thing like that to happen. It's upsetting, ma'am. And Gladys helped search everywhere, and there was Miss Lavinia saying she was going to the police about it. And then it turned up again, pushed right to the back of a drawer in the dressing table. Now what? Now what has happened? That why has why is she being dismissed? The reason comes in this paragraph. She tells that the, what happened is that Miss Emily was one of the uh, Skinners, right? Her brooches, her brooch was missing, and uh, uh, there was so much confusion about it. Uh, people were pa panicked and uh, such a hue and cry for it as never before. And um, and you know what happened? They all suspected Gladdy for this, that uh, she has she has stolen the brooch, but. Uh, Miss Lavinia said that she would be going to the police for this. She would be taking this to the police, and all of a sudden the brooch appeared. Okay, it came. Um, it was found where in the drawer uh, in the in one of the drawers of the dressing table, uh, and it was pushed right at the back. So as Miss Lavinia talked about police, the brooch, <clears throat> they found the brooch. Okay, so let's see what happened. And the very next day, a plate got broken, and Miss Lavinia she bounced outright away and told Gladdy to take a month's notice. And what Gladdy feels is it couldn't have been just a plate, and that Miss Lavinia was just making an excuse of that, and that it must be because of the brooch, and they think that she took it and put it back when the police was mentioned. <clears throat> Gladdy wouldn't do such a thing, and she feels when word of this gets round in the village, she will get a bad name. It is a very serious thing for a girl, as you know, ma'am. <clears throat> so, uh, what happened uh, the next day? Okay, the uh, one day the brooch was missing, and when the police was mentioned, the brooch was found. But the next day, what happened? Um, the, the one of the plates, okay, in Miss Skinner's house, uh, it broke. And now what happened? This was the last straw for Miss Lavinia, and she just um, bounced out right away. Bounce out, bounce out means you can underline and write down, force someone out of something. Uh, this generally indicates that forcing someone out of the job. Okay, and she told uh, Gladdy to take a month's notice. When do we take a month's notice? That means when the employer asks. Uh, or when the employer is about to fire um, uh, the employee, then he or she gives a month's notice so that the person can find a job somewhere else. Okay, so she asked the she asked Gladdy to take a month's notice. Uh, but what Gladdy felt is that uh, that it was it was not because of the plate. Okay, she had the feeling that Miss Lavinia is firing her because of the brooch. Uh, because she thought that Miss Lavinia suspect her to um, that she had she had stolen the she had stolen the brooch in the first place, and when she talked about the police, and when she talked of involving the police in the matter, then uh, she immediately put the brooch back. Okay, and uh, it is all it is all about the brooch and not about the plate. And uh, when such thing when uh, when people would know in the village. That uh, uh, Gladdy has been fired because she was she had stolen something from her employer's house. Then it would give her very bad name in the society, and it is a very serious thing. So Edna told all these things to her um, mistress, that is uh, Miss Marple. Miss Marple nodded. She was quite sure of the girl's honesty and could well imagine that this must have upset her. Edna said sadly, "I suppose, ma'am, is there something you could do about it? Tell her not to be silly," said Miss Marple crisply. 
if she didn't take the brooch, which I'm sure she didn't, then she has no cause to be upset. I'm going up that way this afternoon. I'll have a word with the Mrs. Skinner's at Old Hall. Oh, thank you, madam, said Edna. Now, um, Edna has told all the things. She has um, described everything, what has happened with Gladdy. And uh, Miss Marple has also heard the, heard the whole thing. She has taken all the information. And now Edna is requesting uh, Miss Marple to do something. If she could, uh, she could do something uh, in order to save her cousin. So, <clears throat> Miss Marple, uh, she pacifies Edna and tells, and, and tells her to tell Gladdy that there's nothing to be worried. If she, if she is not the thief, then she should not worry at all. Uh, and uh, also, she also tells Edna that she would be going uh, towards that, um, towards Miss Skinner's house, uh, which is there in the old hall. And she would be talking to them. Okay. To whom? To Miss Lavinia and Miss Emily. These are the two sisters who have been mentioned as Skinners, right? Uh, ne le next, let's see what is there in the story. Old Hall was a big old house surrounded by wood, uh, surrounded by woods near the village. It had been divided into four flats, which were let out to four different tenants. Miss Marple was acquainted with all the tenants, though she did not know them well. The elder Mrs. Skinner, Miss Lavinia, was what might be termed the working member of the family. Miss Emily, the younger, spent most of her time in bed, suffering from various complaints, which, in the opinion of the village, were largely imaginary. Only Miss Lavinia believed devoutly in her sister's sickness and willingly ran errands for her. Now, a brief description of Old Hall is also given. Just underline the first uh, um, four lines. Old Hall was a big house surrounded by wood near, woods near the village. And uh, it had been divided into four flats, which were let out to four different tenants. And you can write down, this is the description of Old Hall. Okay, so this was a place. It was a very big old house, which was surrounded by woods, uh, you know, woods, forest near the village. Okay. And then the, uh, it was divided into four portions and four um, and four tenants were living in each portion. Tenants mean the, tenant means the, a person who lives in a house, in a flat or in a room um, by paying rent. Okay. A person who lives on rent simply is known as a tenant. So the old big, big old house was divided into four parts and um, in the in all the four parts, different different mm -hmm. uh, tenants were living, and in one of the and one of the part was uh, one of the parts was occupied by the Skinners. Okay, uh, Miss Marple was not. Uh, she just uh, she was uh, just acquainted with all the tenants. She did not know them very well. Now, what does acquaint means? Acquaint mean um, means that when you know about the existence of a person, that means yes, uh, so and so person exists, but you do not know more than that. Okay, you do not know about his or her background or you do not know the person very closely. That is known as uh, when you have acquaintance with someone. Okay, so she just knew that, okay, these, these people, uh, these many people are living over here, but then she did not have very close terms with them. Uh, uh, but she knew about Miss Lavinia and Miss Emily and uh, Miss Lavinia and Emily are known as Skinners, as I have already told you. Miss Lavinia is the elder one. She's the elder sister and she's the working person also, okay? And why she's the only working person? Because Miss Emily, she uh, she used to remain in bed all the time uh, because uh, she was, uh, she she assumed that she's suffering from a lot of illness, which nobody believed in uh, except for Miss Lavinia because according to the villagers, uh, if she had been suffering from so, um, so many illnesses, then she would have uh, been... <clears throat> taken to the doctor okay so uh, every all the all kinds of uh, illness which she claimed of uh, they all seem to be imaginary right so this is what we get from this paragraph we know about the old house old hall and we know, we get to know about miss lavinia and miss emily next in fact, it was the general opinion that if Miss Emily suffered half as much as she claimed, she would have sent for the village doctor. 
But Miss Emily, when this was hinted to her, shut her eyes and murmured that her case was not a simple one. The best specialist in London had been baffled by it, and no local doctor could possibly understand her case. So whenever, uh, whenever she was asked to um, uh, to go to the doctor, she she was very reluctant to go to the doctor in first place. She she used to close her eyes and um, uh, and start telling people that uh, it uh, her case was not a simple one. Even the specialists from London they have been confused about her case, and it is it was beyond the um, comprehension of any local doctor. No local doctor could understand her case. Okay, um, why? Because even the specialists from London they have been confused. They have not been able to. Um, they have not been able to figure out what her problem is. Okay, so that is why she was not ready to go to the local doctors. But uh, villagers thought that if her illness was real and if she was suffering from as, half as much as she is claiming to be suffering from, then she would have been sent to the village doctor. But but Miss Miss Emily was not ready to go to the to seek the village doctor. I have told you the reason. You can just mark it. Um, uh, this is the the first paragraph, which is continued from page number one twenty twenty four. Here lies the reason, and you have to frame it in your own words. Whenever you will be asked the reason uh, that why Miss Emily was uh, uh, why Miss Emily did not want to go to the doctor to the village doctor, then the reason lies here only that when he this was hinted to her, she shut her eyes and murmured that her case was not a simple one till. Understand her case, but you are not going to write this line by line. You have to frame it on your own. Okay, if you will be writing this as it is written in the book, you won't be getting marks. Okay, next, <clears throat> the door of the Skinner's flat at Old Hall was opened to Miss Marple by Gladdy, looking more depressed than Miss Marple had ever thought possible. In the sitting room, Miss Lavinia rose to greet Miss Marple. So now, what happens? She goes. Uh, Miss Marple goes to Miss Skinner's house, and um, who opens the door for uh, Miss Marple? It's Gladdy. So it's the first time Miss Marple is uh, visiting Skinner's house, and for the first time, Gladdy is opening the door, and she will be going there uh, for the second time also, and we'll see who opens the door. Okay. So this is the point to note that. Um, uh, when when she visited Mrs. Skinner's uh, house for the first time, Gladdy opened the door. And who is Gladdy? The maid who has been accused of theft, right? And she was looking very depressed. She was looking very nervous. Okay, uh, more than uh, more than uh, what Miss Marple could imagine. And in the sitting room in the living area, who was um, Miss Lavinia? She rose to greet Miss Marple. Uh, now, Lavinia Skinner was a tall, here it is written tail, just write down tall, okay, cut the strike it off and write down tall, gaunt, bony woman of 50. She had a gruff voice and an abrupt man. She was a very rude lady, okay. As servants were often the main topic of conversation in the village, so it was not difficult for Miss Marple to lead the conversation in that direction. Miss Marple mentioned that she had heard that nice girl Gladdy was leaving. Now, a brief, in, a brief description of Miss Lavinia has been given that she was a tall and a skinny lady and um, she had a rough voice and rough nature also. She was a rude lady. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then uh, people usually, they uh, in that village, they usually, they used to talk about the maid they used to discuss about their mates. So it was not difficult for Miss Marple to come to the topic of Gladdy. Okay, so it was it was a, a usual thing when people used to meet in that village, they used to discuss about their mates. So Miss Marple also started this uh, topic and started this conversation that um, she had heard that Gladdy uh, was asked to leave. Miss Lavinia nodded. She agreed. She said yes. Uh, broke things, you know, can't have that. So she said that uh, she has been breaking the things and uh, she cannot tolerate that. She cannot endure that thing. Miss Marple sighed and said, we all had to put up with things nowadays. It was so difficult to get girls to come to the village. 
Did Miss Skinner really think it was wise to part with Laddie? <clears throat> Miss Marple told her she she sighed and she tried to convince uh, Miss Lavinia that uh, these days we have to avoid these things. You have to overlook such things. Okay, put up uh, had to put up means. Uh, see in the first line, Miss Marple sighed and said we all had to put up with things. Now put up uh, have to put up with things means we have to tolerate these things now. Okay, we have to endure these things. What things that you have to overlook when when the maid uh, they break uh, when the maids break something then we have to overlook because we cannot pinpoint each and everything. You cannot get a perfect maid. Okay, and. Um, and the, um, the more important thing is that she is honest and it is very difficult to get an honest mate nowadays. So you can just overlook what she has done or if she is breaking the things or not. <clears throat> uh, I know it's difficult to get servants, admitted Miss Lavinia. Then don't you, uh, don't you think you might reconsider your dis uh, decision about Gladi? She really is a nice girl. I know all her family, they are very honest. Okay. So when she said that, uh, when uh, Miss Lavinia admitted and uh, she agreed with her, with uh, Miss Marple's point that it is difficult to get maid, to get servants. <clears throat> To that, uh, Miss Marple, uh, Miss Marple asked her to reconsider her decision about Gladie because, after all, she's a she's an honest woman, and it is very difficult to get honest servant. And why does she claim Gladie to be honest? Why is she so sure that Gladie is honest? Because Miss Marple had known them uh, beforehand only. She had known her family, uh, and her cousin Edna was working with her. So that is why she knew that um, she was well aware of the nature of Gladi, right? That is why she was so sure, she was so certain that Gladi was an honest girl. Miss Lavinia shook her head. I have got my reasons, she said importantly. Then she changed the subject. Do come and see Miss Emily, Miss Marple. I'm sure it would do her good. Then, uh, then she... <clears throat> Uh, she just changed the topic by saying, uh, she she said that I have got my own reasons. Uh, that means she did not want Miss Marple to interfere in the matter. And then she changed the subject. She asked her to come along to see Miss Emily. And uh, <clears throat> then what happened, they go to Miss Emily. Miss Marple meekly followed Miss Lavinia into the dimly lit room where Miss Emily was lying in her bed. The dim light showed her to be a thin looking creature with a good deal of grayish hair untidily worn around her head like a bird's nest. So what happens, uh, Miss Lavinia and Miss Marple, they move towards the room where Miss Emily was lying and the room was dimly lit. Uh, it was not a bright room and uh, Miss Lavinia, Miss Emily, um, was lying there. Uh, she was looking very thin. Uh, okay, and uh, her hair were all grayish, and it, uh, it uh, and it was tied very untidily, and it has been compared like to a bird's nest. Okay, so in this paragraph, we get the description of Miss Emily <laughs> with half eye, with half closed eyes, and in a thin, weak voice. Emily Skinner explained that this was one of her bad days. Now she says that uh, uh, Emily Emily told her, Miss Emily told Miss Marple, uh, she must have asked about her health. So Miss Emily told Miss Mar uh, Marple that it, uh, it was one of her bad days and she was not in good health. The worst of ill health is, said Miss Emily in a melancholy tone, that one knows what a burden one is to everyone around one. So now she is saying the worst part about ill health is that one per the the person the patient uh, he or she becomes what he or she becomes a burden to everyone around him or her okay because um, everybody has to uh, look after that person and then uh, you know you have to take care about her diet his or her diet and the time of medicines and everything so the so the patient he, he or she feels that i i have become a burden for the rest of my family members so that is what uh, miss emily is saying that the worst part about ill health is that uh, we become the burden on the family melancholy tone you know very sadly in a very sad tone
Lavinia is very good to me. Miss Emily smiled feebly at her guest and remarked that she did hate giving anyone any trouble, but her sickness was such that she couldn't help it. And then she tells uh, Miss Marple that her sister Lavinia, she had been really good. She had been taking uh, care of her all through the time, times and. <clears throat> And how, and also she tell, she told uh, Miss Marple that how she uh, hates giving trouble to the people around her. But then um, it is because of her illness that she can't help it. Okay, she has she 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 thinks that she bothers her sister a lot because she is sick. She is ill. On returning home, Miss Marple told Edna that evening that she was afraid her visit was unsuccessful. However, it would be difficult for the Skinners to find anyone else because girls don't want to work at Old Hall simply because they are nervous coming home alone on their days out. So when she returned back from <clears throat> the Skinners, she told who returns, Miss Miss Marple. She she tells Edna that her 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 visit was unsuccessful because she could not convince the Skinners to um, reconsider their decision of about dismissing. Gladdy, okay, but then she assures Edna that it will be very difficult for them to find another maid because uh, because girls they usually why why will it be difficult for them to find uh, another maid? Here lies the reason because uh, the girls are very nervous uh, when they have to come home alone on their days out that means when uh, after their duty when their duty uh, gets off and uh, they feel very nervous that means it might have not been safe for the girls to come out to, to the village alone right <clears throat> days out means when they get an off from work when their duty completes at the end of the day or on holidays Next, when Miss Marple next visited Old Hall, now see, uh, earlier we read that when she first visited, now is the second time she is visiting. Okay, so when Miss Marple visited uh, next Old Hall, you can underline this line. When did she visit next? On the occasion of raising funds for the church fate. Okay, she went on to raise the funds for the church fate. Uh, where did she go? The old hall. Now what she finds out that Mary Higgins, the new maid, opened the door. So the first time, Gladdy opened the door. And for the second time, it's the new maid. That means Gladdy has been fired. She has been replaced. By whom? By Mary Higgins, Okay, who is the new maid. She was certainly a more superior. We'll strike out most and write down more. More superior looking maid uh, at a guess 40 years of age. So she was around 40 years of age with neat black hair, rosy cheeks, a plump figure, dressed in black with a wide apron and cap. So this is the description of Mary. Uh, see, Gladdy was a stout and she was a superior looking maid uh, at the age of 40 around something. And um, she had very neat black hair and uh, she was wearing this uh, black clothes and tied white apron and she was also carrying a hat wearing a hat on her head a cap miss lavinia told miss marple i really feel i owe a great deal to mary i am so thankful i had the resolution to get rid of that girl Mary is really invaluable, cooks nicely and waits beautifully and keeps our little flat scrupulously clean. Mattress is turned over every day and she is really wonderful with Emily. Now, Miss Lavinia, she is praising her new maid. Why is she laying so much stress? Because earlier, what, uh, what happened earlier, Miss Marple, she went to convince uh, Miss Lavinia to reconsider her decision about replacing gladly so now she is very she's laying a lot of stress on uh, uh, she is laying a lot of emphasis and she's praising hard um, whom her new maid that is mary higgins so she's saying that she is really she's really lucky to have such a maid and and it was really good decision it was a very good decision of uh, of getting rid of the old maid that is of gladly 
and this girl she is she is very nice she is very perfect and she cooks also very nicely and she cooks very nicely and um, she cleans the house very uh, like clear, very very nicely she makes the house very tidy scrupulously means uh, very carefully paying attention to the minutest details okay write down scrupulously underline very carefully paying attention to the minutest detail okay so she used to clean the house like that and uh, and that she also told how happy she is with her performance and um, she is very wonderful and she is also very good with emily who is emily emily is the sixth sister of miss lavinia dear me said miss marvel you are fortunate yes indeed i really feel mary has been sent to us as an answer to prayer if one has no domestic worries it takes such a load off one's mind doesn't it how is your edna shaping now miss marvel uh, on hearing all this she says that um, you are very lucky indeed because you have got such a nice uh, such a nice maid in such a less uh, in such a less amount of time and to this um, they are just having conversation she uh, miss lavinia says that yes indeed and my uh, our prayers have been answered and she has come uh, as an answer to our prayer and then she inquires about her about edna okay how is your edna shaping means Uh, basically we ask about uh, we use this word shaping when we want to know about the progress of the person okay so how is your edna doing in case of doing here it has been written shaping because she wants to know about the progress how is she progressing okay is she if if one wants to know about the development of someone so that is the thing she is doing quite nicely not much ahead of course not like your mary still i don't know all about edna because she is from the village okay so uh, she she tells that yes edna is doing great but she is not as perfect as your mary but uh, but uh, i'm quite satisfied with her performance because i know she is honest because she is from the village okay then for 10 days longer the entire village had to endure hearing of the excellence of miss lavinia and miss emily's treasure on the 11th day the village awoke to its big thrill mary the perfect maid was missing her bed had not been slept in and the front door was found ajar she had slipped out quietly during the night right so what happens is that Uh, now uh, when when they had uh, when the skinners have found this um, mary higgins so for 10 long days the villagers everybody in the village had to listen about the uh, you know had to listen the praises of uh, miss lavinia and miss emily's treasure who is the treasure mary higgins so write down treasure has been referred to as the new maid mary higgins okay so everybody had to listen about the excellence sees of uh, mary higgins now what for 10 days this this went on now what uh, what happened on the 11th day everybody was thrilled to, to the fact that miss uh, this mary higgins the perfect maid was missing and her her she did not uh, her bed had not been slept means she did not sleep that night and the door was found open and she had slept slipped out of the house quietly during the night so she um, escaped the house okay she was not there she was missing and we will do it till here and we'll find out what happens next tomorrow okay so what will happen and what all she took with her okay has has she stolen the things or has she been kidnapped or something like that we will know tomorrow so i hope you people have understood this much Thank you so much for being patient. Have a nice day.